Hey, what's up everybody? Now that the Acolyte has finished, it seems like a good time to talk about this headline that I'd seen come up on Fandom Wire months ago, where basically Star Wars and Marvel fans were kind of hating on Disney and basically saying that they had enough and that Disney was kind of ruining those two franchises. It's interesting that it was both Star Wars and Marvel, but we're going to get into some of the details as to why we think that this is possibly the case and the Acolyte having now finished and being maybe one of the most controversial and partly hated shows, certainly for Star Wars, that's ever been made under Disney seems like a good idea to actually discuss this so let's get into it right now. So starting with the Star Wars side of things I think it's fair to say that the things Disney are putting out on Disney Plus and in cinemas for Star Wars content is definitely controversial. There's always going to be a division between people that love it and people that hate it and that goes right through the kind of sequel trilogies and with the shows that they're making but it's really hit and miss I find sometimes where certain shows like say Ahsoka are a lot more popular than one say like The Acolyte. So it seems as though they're capable of occasionally doing something that's really really good. The Ahsoka show I thought was abs absolutely brilliant. I actually really enjoyed that and I felt like it had some good bits of lore in it. Um, it felt like the characters were engaging even though some of them were completely original and brand new that we hadn't seen before. They were quite likeable or hateable and you were kind of a little bit easier to kind of get into that show and enjoy the characters that were in there. Um, so shows like that were actually really good, but then they bring out the Acolyte, which seems like the exact opposite of that, where they're breaking law, disrupting canon, characters in it are actually generally quite irritating, they don't seem to follow plots particularly well, it's either just basically pure gold or absolute rubbish. So it's, it's weird that they can't find this balance particularly. Arguably there will be some people that say Disney making Star Wars content has always been bad, but then similarly there'll be people that defend it and say it's always been really good. I think there's a fine line between the two. Certainly fair to say that like The Force Awakens in terms of the movies was good, but when you then get to The Last Jedi it starts to become really controversial where it's a bit more like a Marmite movie, you either love it or you hate it. And then you get to the very end with The Rise of Skywalker where it has a really dedicated fan base that love it, but it also really, really like irked a lot of people who didn't then like it and who got quite venomous about it. So you've really got kind of two levels of extremes with it. And then similarly with the shows that they bring out, again, it's kind of hit and miss. You'll have good ones like Ahsoka, bad ones like The Acolyte. Andor was another show that was generally quite good, but I did find it quite interesting that there are people out there, Star Wars fans, who will go through the process of like hating on it for like the weirdest of little details, like because it had bricks in it was one that I'd seen, um, or, or screws uh, were in it, which was just really bizarre. And actually, when you think about it, it's kind of canon to have screws in it because you actually see them on Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in the original trilogy. So you can't argue that it's not canon to have things like screws and bricks are just a way of building something, who cares? So it just seems really weird, like sometimes I feel like the fan base is deliberately going out of the way to find things to hate, and if they're going to go down to things like that, kind of seems a little bit redundant, but similarly there are bad shows, so it's kind of just getting that balance right. The show uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi was again a little bit of some people loved it, some people hated it. I personally found that there were a lot of things that were wrong in that show, at times there were really weird mistakes in it, like Obi-Wan not being clever enough to work out he can walk around a defensive barrier rather than having to insist on not being able to go through it. There were silly little things like that, and certainly the episodes in the middle of the series felt like filler, but then you're bookmarked with really good things and good content, like the final showdown at the end between Kenobi and Darth Vader Anakin was really cool. And at the beginning of the show, when you had the flashbacks to the two of them as Kenobi and Anakin training during the Clone Wars, really, really awesome. And similarly with that, with the Ahsoka show, when you got the flashbacks of Anakin through Ahsoka kind of going through the world between worlds and kind of seeing those flashbacks to the Clone Wars, epically brilliant that people really loved. So it just seems as though they can't get the balance right. There's always going to be things that are going to disrupt Star Wars fans to a degree because it's obviously such loved content that as soon as you kind of do something that's a little bit different or not quite right or you don't portray a character in a particular way it all kind of starts to fall down it's very much a house of cards so you can build up a show that looks like it's going to be really really cool and brilliant and then it just starts to kind of ebb and flow and then you just start cutting into it with silly little mistakes the acolyte is a perfect example with that going down the route of saying that actually anakin isn't the chosen one he's one of the few um 
is clearly going to upset the prequel fans and the Anakin diehard fans, and it's easy to understand why. The writing in that show just seemed to be really, really poor. And on top of that, the creators of it went out of their way to actually say they don't care about upsetting people. They actually seem to go out of their way to deliberately annoy them. And I just feel like that is just really bad. Both Star Wars and Marvel also do this. They say that when something is review bombed or not popular, it's the fans fault, not the creators fault. That is a surefire way to just upset everybody because it's not the fans fault. The fans will hold Disney, Marvel Studios, Lucasfilm to account. If your content's not very good, they're going to tell you. It is not the fans fault if you're letting them down. And yes, albeit that sometimes things will get review bombed because, you know, maybe there's an element of sexism involved in it, uh, or maybe there's an element of just review bombing them because they don't like the actors that are in something. You know, there is that degree of, yeah, okay, fine. Some of the fandoms are particularly toxic or just people in general. That's absolutely fair, but you can't sort of like just carpet bomb the whole approach and say this show is performing really, really badly. It's getting review bombed. It's actually really good and it must be the fans fault. It's not always going to be the fans fault. And the content that have been, has been put out by these studios has been poor. I mean, let's look at Marvel Studios. If you're going to go down the route of bad stuff, I mean, there's just the smorgasbord of things that you could go through. The one that stands out to me the most is Thor Love and Thunder. That was just the worst film I've ever had to sit through in my entire life. It was so appalling. I mean, the comedy on it is just painful. It's not funny. It's genuinely painful. Like, it seriously hurts to watch that. And then things like The Marvels, which was like, okay, but you're still using an actor in that show who's generally going to bring in controversy. Um, and they're stories that no one's asking for. I, I genuinely kind of feel like they should have stopped making Marvel movies after Endgame. I know there's a lot of stories that you can still go on and tell, and there's loads of things in the comics, that's great. But you had an incredible Infinity Saga where almost, almost everything was brilliant. There were a few things where maybe some of the movies weren't quite so good, or maybe Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. wasn't to everybody's tastes, and then they fell out with the studios, and that's the whole thing. But you know, arguably as soon as Endgame finished, they were always then going to struggle. And I feel as though the ball was dropped after that point, because at that moment was when Disney Plus came along. And it just seems as though it's content for content's sake. They're going for the, the quantity, not the quality. And then Star Wars naturally fell the same way. It's churning out shows, bringing them out, making you want to subscribe to Disney Plus or keep watching it or stay with them or whatever, when in actual fact, the quality of these things just falls off a cliff. She-Hulk, I mean, uh, it was really not great. <laughs> um, it, it really wasn't particularly good. And part of the problem with that show as well, that for me personally as a massive Daredevil fan, I came out at the end of that show thinking at least Daredevil wasn't too damaged. And if that's the way that you're approaching a show as a fan, sort of just hoping that they're not going to destroy your favourite characters, that kind of says everything about the quality that's actually coming out at the moment. And Disney are just like churning it out. It's a moneymaker to them, and that's why they buy these franchises in the first place. They know they can churn things out, there'll be enough of a fan base to kind of stick with it, and enough people going to the cinemas to kind of stick with it, that they'll continue to make money out of it. And realistically, as much as fan bases will complain, myself included, we're still paying for it. We're either paying for Disney Plus subscriptions or we're paying for cinema tickets. And until fans start to actually speak with their wallets, then Disney aren't going to care. They're just going to keep churning stuff out because they know it's going to bring in the money. And it's going to be really interesting. Deadpool and Wolverine comes out this weekend. Uh, I've got my ticket booked for it. So, you know, I'm hoping that it's going to be really good. The trailers are really cool. The Rotten Tomatoes rating on it at the moment is about 80-ish percent, so it's it's looking okay. But then similarly, some of the critics have absolutely hated it. Critic sort of reviews are always a little bit difficult to, to really gauge when it comes to this kind of content, because when it comes to like proper professional movie and film and show critics, well, first of all, they're paid to criticise, so they're never going to say that something is flawless because that's just not what they're going to do. They're going to find fault where they can find it and then talk about it. But they're also looking at creation of, of content in a different lens. And 
Nine times out of ten, you can guarantee that if something is, is kind of not performing well with the critics, the fans actually might love it and vice, vice versa. Sometimes the critics will love something, but the fans will hate it. You know, you're looking at it through different lenses. And when you're a fan of something, you're really trying to connect to characters and storylines and sort of envelop yourself into that world. And you're sort of more perhaps sympathetic towards a character or, or you're more invested in the storyline or what happens. Critics don't really do that. They're more interested in does it look good aesthetically? Is the writing any good? Has the music blah, blah, blah. So all of those things are relevant, but critic reviews aren't necessarily what we should be looking at here. This is really about fan reaction. And I think it's fair to say that the quality has been picked up by fans predominantly and now sort of saying, or well, I mean, some of them for a long time, that the quality just has dropped off a cliff. With the Acolyte show, you had something that was potentially very good. But part of the problem with the Acolytes is that no one cares. No one's interested in, in the, the kind of the High Republic or post High Republic era. They're characters that are completely brand new and original. And yes, that gives you some creativity and freedom to kind of go off and do something that's, that's brand new and fresh. But then you ruin it because you're tying in canon ideas and storylines and even bringing back characters that aren't supposed to be there because they're not even born yet. As soon as you start making those mistakes and, and bringing that in, then any credibility that you could have given the show as being completely original and unique and brand new and fresh, you've lost it because you've ruined it, you've tarnished it by sort of trashing existing lore. You haven't gone out of your way to create something new, you've gone out of your way to damage what already existed. So it becomes then really difficult to start defending Disney because they keep doing this, they keep on making the same mistakes. One of the things, I think I mentioned it before, was the Marvels, which came out at the end of last year. It didn't perform particularly well, not a high lot of amount of revenue that came in and pretty much review bombed. Part of the problem I thought with the Marvels is that it wasn't that bad a film. It was actually quite watchable. Some of the humour in it was lost on me. They kind of felt like they were repeating similar gags to what they've previously done. Um, but part of the problem is that two of the main characters of the Marvels with Ms. Marvel and I can't even remember her name. Um, the problem is that those, those characters came out of the Disney Plus shows uh, where you've got Rambo who came out of the Scarlet Witch series and obviously you've got Ms. Marvel came from the Ms. Marvel show. And people that go to the cinema, you can't assume that they've all watched Disney Plus, they're gonna look at that movie poster and think, I only know one of these three characters, who are the other two? So immediately they start to lose interest in people because they might have gone to see something that was just Captain Marvel because they're moviegoers and they've, they've gone to the cinema, they've seen the other films, they'll maybe go and see this one. Now you've got these two random people and they don't understand who they're supposed to be and you've got a film about them. So instantly you isolate your audience and instantly you make people feel like, well, I'm not gonna go and watch that because I clearly haven't watched Disney Plus, I've not seen those shows, I don't know what it's gonna be about. So you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot by making those mistakes, churning out that kind of content that, you know, arguably people don't want to go to the cinema to see it. So yeah, it performed really badly, um, but there are reasons for it. And that's not the fans fault because I dare say the diehard Marvel fans will have gone to have seen it. Um, but you haven't got enough of them to create mega blockbuster hits like you'd had with Endgame and Infinity War and all that kind of thing. And the thing is with Infinity and Endgame is that they were so epic and so huge and so kind of craved for by the time that they got to the end of that decade that everybody was going to rush and go and see it. Everybody by that point knew who the characters were. They loved the Avengers movies. They knew that they were going to go there and see something that was epic and amazing. And it actually delivered probably more Infinity War than Endgame. But still, as soon as you saw one, you had to see the other. And both of them performed superbly. I mean, absolutely brilliantly. Surely it would have been better to kind of just just kind of cut it there and say, yep, yeah, that's fine. We finished this saga. It was brilliant. Maybe step away from that point because everything that's come out then has just basically been sludge. I mean, it's, it's kind of really, really bad writing characters where you're, you're sort of, you are scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the characters you're bringing out these movies for now, because you've killed off all of your best ones. You know, Iron Man is gone, Captain America is gone. You, all you've got left really is kind of like Captain Marvel and the Hulk and Thor, but you've turned Thor into a walking joke and the Hulk can't really be taken seriously because even he in the movies prior to that was also becoming a bit of a joke. Nobody seems to be, or certainly not enough people seem to be interested in, in Captain Marvel as a character to kind of carry it through into a second saga. Um, you know, Scarlet Witch was a B character in the, in the 
Infinity Saga. Now she's expected to kind of carry the weight of it. The same with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They're, they're B characters, not A characters. So, you know, you're, you're going to be struggling with this incredibly. Moon Knight was actually really good. I, I genuinely enjoyed it. That was something that came out. People generally really received it well. People liked it. So they've scrapped doing a sequel. Like, why take your best stuff and things that actually work and then not do any more of it? It was original, it was fresh, it was a new story, it was great, the characters were really good, great action sequences, a little bit darker in tone, and audiences really liked it. So their immediate reaction is, okay, well, we're not gonna make that again, we're gonna go and do She-Hulk, and we're gonna do Ms. Marvel, and you know, we're gonna make these jokey things. And it's almost as though they're instantly trying to reduce the average age of people that are, are watching this content. That they've always been relatively family friendly. Deadpool is a bit of an exception with that for this weekend. But at the end of the day, you've got, you know, these characters who come across as being predominantly too funny, very light hearted, and it's almost a little bit clownish. And I, I feel like they're trying to lower the, the audience age um, that's actually watching these shows and consuming them. The same applies with Star Wars. I feel like with the Acolyte, it was very childish and it comes across in, in like you had only real two major action sequences throughout an eight part series. The rest of it's all dialogue, which means that if you are a younger audience, you're probably going to be bored of it. And there's nothing in there to kind of appeal to people that like these things because there's action involved. You're relying on dialogue and, and the, the acting is in it is not good enough to kind of carry the weight of the stories that they're trying to tell or, or make you feel invested. When you compare it to something outside of Disney, say like House of the Dragon and uh, Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, you know, those kind of epic franchises, you care about the characters, you're invested in them very, very earlier on because the acting draws you in. The, the acting is so good that you instantly care, the characters are interesting, engaging, you either love them or you hate them, and they suck you in immediately. You could even apply the same thing to Vikings on Netflix, particularly in the earlier series. There, you know, you had Ragnar who was just epically intriguing. The actor who played him was fantastic. And you want to see what he gets up to because you never really know what he's going to do. You know, you just, you're engaged and you're, you're curious and that brings you back episode after episode. And Disney at the moment, they're just not hitting that when it comes to Star Wars and Marvel. There are a lot of times where with certain shows that have been coming out, you are, in my opinion, forcing yourself to watch a lot of this and you're not really getting a lot of actual enjoyment out of it. So in terms of the headline of fans being outraged at Disney for essentially destroying Star Wars and Marvel, well you can certainly say that there has been a change in my opinion at least in terms of the quality of the content that's coming out and the moment that it started was when Disney Plus came along. As soon as that happened the quality dropped off because it was more about quantity and unfortunately I feel like that's just not going to stop. The one blessing, if you like, is that now that the head of Disney has changed, it does seem as though we're maybe getting a little bit of a, like a slower production of these things coming out. Part of the problem was, has been visually as well, like the special effects and the, um, you know, the, the digital art that goes into these, the quality of that had dropped off quite a lot. That didn't look great. And a lot of the studios, the actual editing studios that come out and do all of the graphics for that have said, well, that's because we're overworked. You're giving us too much to do with too short deadlines and we can't do it all and therefore it doesn't look very good. So if you want the quality to be better, even on a visual level, Disney are messing that up because they're trying to do too much too soon and push it and push it and push it. And they seem to have learned nothing from what they had as a successful formula with the Infinity Saga. You had a couple of movies, maybe up to three maximum a year. You didn't then have shows filling it in between and telling stories that nobody asked for. I mean, look at what Marvel have got coming out. We've got an Agatha series. Who cares? Who cares? Nobody wants to see a show about Agatha. And if you do, why? Why would you want to watch that? I mean, we've gone from struggling with like B-level characters to like really bottom of the barrel and now down to the Z list. In fact, they're not even in the barrel. That's just, that's just ridiculous. Um, nobody has asked for this show. There are things that fans are asking for. Um, we've obviously got the whole idea of a, a Blade reboot coming out, but that just keeps getting paused and paused and paused and like postponed again and again and again and again. And similarly with Star Wars, it's like, well, we're not really interested in the High Republic because not everybody, not everybody consumes 
Star Wars books and novels. A lot of the times they're more interested in maybe the games or the shows or the movies and that's, that's fine. So a lot of people want to go back to the old Republic, like way, way, way back and, and do that in live action. That would be cool. And that would be something that fans have asked for. Try doing that. Instead, we've got sequels to the sequel trilogy, which I do think there is a demand for that as much as I'm sure people will argue with me about it. There are sequel fans that will want to feel like they want more content coming. Um, and OK, that's fair enough. I do like the sequels myself, so I, I wouldn't mind seeing a follow up. It's not an episode 10. Apparently, it's supposed to be its own thing. So I'm curious to see what it looks like. But at the same time, Disney sh should be realizing they've had their fingers burnt so many times with, you know, content that people aren't really asking for and then failing to deliver on it for those that are. So you just kind of feel like maybe it's time to step back. But they won't. They won't. It's Disney. As I said before, this is a money spinner to them. They buy these franchises because they want to push out content, keep it relevant because they're also making investments in Disney parks. I mean, let's be honest, we are, what, three days before Deadpool and Wolverine comes out uh, at the time of filming this. Um, by the time it comes out, the film actually probably will be released. And I think over the last couple of days, they've now started to release Deadpool out into the Disney parks um, for the first time ever. And... I think this is part of the reason why we've got a little bit of a problem is because you're also having to consider that Disney parks are obviously creating lands in their theme parks for Star Wars, for Marvel. You've got Galaxy's Edge, obviously, for Star Wars. Um, you know, Disneyland Paris and in California and in Florida, they all have their kind of versions of Avengers Campus and all this kind of thing. Um, and that's fine, but it does create a problem where they're going to be constantly now pushing out content for those franchises because otherwise it loses relevance really, really quickly and people will go and see it once and then not really care. But by constantly churning out the content means that the parks still keep their relevance and that therefore they can somehow justify keep churning out these shows and these movies again and again and again. Um, and it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. It doesn't matter how much fans complain about it. If the creators of these shows are going to come out and say that they don't care and that they're going to go out of their way to antagonize people, then it's basically a losing battle. And Disney are only ever going to keep making money because enough people will enjoy it. And on that terrible disappointment, I would love to know what you think about this, because um, I do think that there's going to be, uh, you know, there are going to be people on the fence. There are going to be people that say they absolutely hate what Disney have done with Star Wars and with Marvel. Um, but I do feel like there's there's room for both sides of that argument and some things you can love and some things you can hate but it's just a shame that Disney can't figure out where the right balance is and actually get it right all of the time. So there we go and as I said before on that terrible disappointment yet yeah, please leave a comment let me know what you think please give the video a like as it really supports the channel um, please subscribe if you haven't already as we'll be making a lot more of these kind of vlogs and having these discussions going forward so please do subscribe if you want more content and with that said I will see you guys real soon. <laughs>